Hello, 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 YouTube world. It's Miss Patty with For Your CNA, and I'm here for our weekly live question and answer session uh, where we go over um, questions that you may have on CNA training, testing, or workplace issues. Uh, we're happy to talk to you about all of that. Um, if you have a comment or a question, please leave it in the chat below. When you come in, give me a quick wave. Let me know that you're here so I can properly greet you. So as usual today, um, I before I start answering questions while you guys come in and, and kind of get settled, I want to give a little bit of a lesson. And I was really kind of um, trying to figure out what I was going to be talking about today. Um, but I got an email from one of my students. This is one of my classroom students who um, had registered for Prometrics testing. And she sent me her... Um, read her application status which you can see right here um i kind of took out all the stuff that um identified her and she was asking about the timeline so how long does this whole process take and this is actually a question i get asked quite a bit and the next question is well what happens if i think it's taking longer than it should what should what's my next step what should i do so i thought that this would be a really good topic for today now, I do want to preface this by saying that it is rainy today where I'm at in Florida. Um, it has rained all day. I don't know what that's going to do to my internet connection. Um, and I know that uh, we may have some more storms rolling through. So I will let's all kind of keep our fingers crossed that we can stay on for the entire time today. But if I drop off, that's why. Um, and. Uh, before we get started, I would like to invite you guys to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're at 93,000 subscribers. If I can get to 100,000, I get one of those really cool little um, YouTube silver play buttons. And I actually have a brand new shelf right here where I've got an opening right there for that plaque. So if you want to help me get that plaque, hit the subscribe button for me and uh, get all of your friends and classmates to do so too. That way um, we can show it off. And uh, if I get one, I'll do a whole unboxing video and we'll put it up on the shelf together. Um, I think that would be really fun. All right, so let's talk about prometric testing processes. So this is what I'm going to talk to you about is specific to prometric. Other um, Testing agencies have a slightly different process, and I'm not as familiar with those. I'll look into it so I can do some future episodes on those. But I want to kind of focus on Prometric uh, right now, which Prometric is in like 14 states. So this is relative to a lot of you guys. So when you register for the test with Prometric, no matter what Prometric state you're in, when you register for the test with Prometric on their website, it's Prometric.com forward slash nurse aid forward slash your state, the, the two initials for your state. So for Florida, it would be prometric.com forward slash nurse aid with an E forward slash FL. And it'll take you to the page. When you register, now I have a whole um, video on my website on foryourcna.com about how to register for the test. And it walks you through the whole application process. But when you register, you have to make sure that you have a level two background on file. If you don't have a level two background check on file, when you get this paper right here, or I'm sorry, this paper right here, the one on the side, when you get that paper, it's going to tell you application incomplete. Um, or it may say under the FBI background status section, it may say a uh, record not found. Now it, it can come in two different ways. So you want to, when you register for the test, about usually two to three days after you submit your registration, you're gonna get an email from Prometric that has an attachment. When you open up that attachment, this is what you're gonna see, this paper. You wanna look to make sure it says application status complete. If it says incomplete, you need to call Prometric and find out why. If it if looked a little bit further where it says FBI background status, if that box right there says record not found, that means they don't have a level two background check on you that they could find. Now, a lot of people want to argue about this. Guys, you can't argue uh, for this. There's nobody to argue to. I mean, you can kind of complain to your 
friends, but there's no one to really argue with over this. It's pretty cut and dried. When they get your application, they look in the, in Florida, it's the clearinghouse, other states, it's a different system, but they look in that designated area for your background check. Now, you may have gotten a background check done for, I don't know, uh, working at a school board or a bank or uh, you were a foster parent and got uh, approved through that with a background check or maybe you have your concealed carry permit or maybe you um, were a federal contractor and got a background check. None of those count. They don't, they won't work. They go into a totally different filing cabinet that Prometric cannot access. So you have to have a level two background check for testing. Um, sometimes if you're working in healthcare, in a healthcare position already, they may be able to access that in some states, like in Florida, the clearinghouse does contain testing background checks as well as current healthcare employee background check. So if you're currently working in healthcare, that one might work. But if you're at all unsure, just go get a background check. That way when they look in that designated area, they can find it and pull it. Because if they can't find your background check, nothing else is going to work. I mean, there's just, it, it, your application literally stops dead in its tracks. And if you don't figure this out pretty quick, this can cause a huge delay in testing. So when you get your background check done, there, there's a code you have to give them that tells them what that background check is for. This is called an ORI number or an ORI code. And it's very important that you get that code correct. Now, if you're testing in Florida, go on to my website for your cna.com under the testing tab look at test registration and instructions i've got the code there for you if you're in any other state you're going to have to get that testing code from your school very important because we want to make sure that that background check that you're getting is being routed to the right place now in other states if you go to school uh, for cna a lot of times they'll do the background check as part of the school admission and you've already got the background check on file on, you know, able to be accessed. But you have to get a level two background check. Now, for most places, this means that it's going to be fingerprint, signature, and picture. So it's going to be photo enabled. So once they, uh, once you submit your application and they go to that um, designated area, that, that special filing cabinet, and they pull your background check, um, then they're going to send it off to the Board of Nursing for approval. Now, if they go in there and there's no background check in there for you, um, it's going to come back and it's going to say record not found or application status incomplete. Um, and you've got to find out why it's incomplete or if it says record not found, you have to get that background check done because nothing's going to happen until you do. But a lot of students at this point, they kind of get stuck. They're like, well, I had a background check done through an employer two years ago. It should be valid. You know, you can complain all you want. But the fact of the matter is that Prometric looked in the filing cabinet, didn't see it. You need to go get one in the filing cabinet. You can, you know, complain all you want, but it doesn't fix the fact that they can't find a background check in this specific filing cabinet that they're looking in. So if you're at all unsure, just go get one done because the process runs a whole lot quicker and smoother if the background check is already in there waiting. So go get the background check done first, apply for the test, when they go look in there, they find it, they pull it, they send it all off to the Board of Nursing. Now, when it gets to the Board of Nursing, most people don't understand this whole process here. So there's three people involved in your testing, okay? There's you, obviously. There's Prometric, who's actually going to handle the test. And then there's the Board of Nursing, who has to approve you for the test. Prometric doesn't do that. The Board of Nursing has to. 
So Prometric gets your application, bundles it all together, sends it over to the Board of Nursing, and the Board of Nursing has to look at your background and figure out if you are safe to take care of grandma unsupervised in grandma's home without hurting her, without stealing her stuff, and without abusing her in any way. So that's what they're looking at. Okay, so they're looking at if they're going to approve you to test for CNA, they're looking at how safe you would be in an unsupervised role in a medical um, arena. Okay, so what this kind of means is that it's not an automated process. This is an eyes-on human person sitting in a room looking at your application and your background check to figure out who you are. Now, that's all they have to go off of. That's it. They have your application and your background check. So if you had one shoplifting charge that was 12 years ago when you were young and made poor decisions... Uh, but you did all the stuff you were supposed to do. You did your community service. You paid your fine. You know, you're, you're, you're good to go. Everything is fine. They're going to look at that and think, okay, this is, you know, somebody that had some poor judgment, but they've been fine for the last 12 years. There's, you know, obviously no other criminal activity. This is not a career criminal. Um, we understand that sometimes people, especially late teens, early adult, maybe not make the best decisions. Um, and this one got caught, okay? <laughs> Trust me, nobody in that age range is always making the right decisions. <laughs> it's just that not everybody gets caught. So they're going to look at that completely differently than if they have an applicant who has 13 shoplifting charges and the last one was three months ago. Now, this person clearly hasn't learned from this experience. This is an ongoing issue. They seem to have um, difficulty uh, avoiding the temptation to take things that aren't theirs. And this is probably not somebody that's going to be safe to work unsupervised in a home-like setting, right? Because remember, when you're going for the CNA test, they're Eval uh, when, when you're a CNA, you can work in any setting. There, there's no restrictions there. You can work in home care, assisted living, nursing homes, rehabs, hospitals, mental health, walk-in clinics, right? You can work in, in any setting. So it's not a restricted certification. So they're looking at if you are not watched, are you likely to do something bad? So somebody with a single charge a million years ago that has, you know, done everything right since then is probably not a threat to grandma. Somebody who has a repeated history of um, bad behavior and poor judgment is probably a little bit riskier, right? They're also looking for people that um, maybe have poor impulse control. So if you are a violent person, like you get frustrated and angry and things aren't going your way and you lash out physically, violently, healthcare may not be the right setting for you. And you kind of have to figure out who you are as a person. This is not to be a punishment. This is just trying to make sure that we have the right people in the right places to keep the public safe. So you kind of have to have a little bit of self-introspection here. Um, so let me see here. My chat is not, oh, there we go. There's the chat. <laughs> My chat wasn't loading. Um, so you have to have a little bit of introspection here to figure out, you know, what kind of person are you? So it's, like I said, it's not supposed to be like a um, punishment. Now, if they look at your background and they have some questions, if they're thinking, you know, 13 shoplifting charges, that's a lot. And the last one was just three months ago. That's concerning. They don't just like rubber stamp denied and move on. They're going to contact you and ask you for a little bit more information. So they send it back to Prometric and say, hey, we need some more info on this one. And they will send you a letter asking for court records 
uh, your side of the story. So you're actually going to write out your side of the story because maybe there were some extenuating circumstances there. Um, so they really kind of want to get to know you a little bit better to make the right decision. Now, if this goes a step further, if they get your information and they still have a few questions or just not 100% comfortable with this, they may invite you to a board of nursing meeting to meet you in person. And now is, this is your opportunity to stand up there and say, yes, I did some bad things. I had poor judgment. I made bad decisions. Um, I'm really trying to set my life back on the right track. I'm out of that situation. I moved 300 miles away. I have no contact with those people anymore. And I really want to uh, advance my career in nursing. They, they look at that, right? They, they're going to judge you on you, not some list of, you know, kind of, um, a fit, disqualifying effect. They, they want to get to know you. Now, there are some offenses that are disqualifying. I mean, you know, if you have put people in bodily um, danger, then, and had poor judgment, if they feel like grandma's not going to be safe with you and grandma's stuff isn't going to be safe, then yeah, they're probably going to make the decision not to, to let you move forward. But for the most part, it, uh, it, it really depends on you and how you uh, present yourself, right? And how um, willing you are to admit your faults and show signs of change and growth. And that's what they're looking for here. Um, so don't be um, totally... Uh, down on yourself if you have a background. A lot of people have backgrounds. There's there's nothing wrong with that. Like I said, everybody was young and young and dumb at one point. Not everybody got caught, right? So we we need to make sure that when you're approaching this, you're approaching it with the right mindset. That it's not a punishment on you. They're not um, targeting you unfairly. Their whole goal is to make sure that grandma is safe. And to do that, they kind of have to get to know you a little bit better. Now, that's not to say, and I want to be clear on this, that's not to say that somebody that has no criminal history can't go out and do something ill-advised, right? Something that puts grandma in jeopardy. Yes, uh, you know, the, the risk is still there, but we want to try to lower the risk as much as possible by not putting known violent offenders in with grandma. And that's what it, it's really all about. So you get the background check, Prometric collects it, they send it to the Board of Nursing. The Board of Nursing looks at your background and makes a determination. They're either going to approve you for testing or they're going to gather more information. Those are the only two avenues that they have, right? Approve you for testing or gather more information. So let's say that you get approved. Now they take that back to Prometric, say, okay, this person is now approved for testing. And that's what you see here on this form. You're going to get an email from Prometric and the bottom line will say application status and this says approved. That means this person has passed all those checks. They are approved for testing. Now we're just waiting because when Prometric gets this notification, they're going to issue you a testing date. Now, they don't take requests. <laughs> Unfortunately, Prometric doesn't really take requests. So, Somewhere around seven to 10 days after you get this paper that you can see here that says application status approved, about seven to 10 days later, you're going to get an email from Prometric that has a test date. Now, that email looks a little bit different than this one. Remember, these are all attachments. Make sure you're opening the attachments. It's going to look a little bit different than this one, and it's going to give you your testing date, time, and place. Um, make sure you are well aware of where you're testing. You may want to do a dry run to figure out how long it's going to take you to get there. Your testing time will be at 9 a.m. You need to be there a half hour early to get checked in. So anything after 8.30 is considered late. If you're late, they may not test you. 
and you are out that money, they do not give refunds. So make sure you are early or on time. I am perpetually late for everything. I know this. My family knows this. Everybody knows this about me. So I would have to, because I know that about myself, I would have to make absolutely sure, set multiple alarms, um, make sure that I have plenty of time to have my coffee, allow for rush hour traffic because it's, you know, during the day, you know, in the morning. So you're going to have rush hour traffic. So you've got to allow extra time for that. I'm probably going to go two days before to scope out the place so I know exactly how to get there and I'm not going to get lost on the way um, because you never know about uh, road conditions, about um, construction, or you just don't know what's happening. You know, you may be able to GPS it, but you want to do a dry run as well. So you want to make sure that you are there no later than 830. But what happens if you get this letter? what you see on the screen here, and it tells you that you're approved, but it's been seven days and you don't have a test date yet. And then it's been eight days and then it's been nine days and now it's been 10 days um, and you don't have a test date yet. Well, you're probably going to need to call Prometric. Now, in periods of high volume, this uh, process can take a little bit longer. So what are periods of high volume? Well, think about who is testing for CNA, right? Who, who, who goes to take the CNA test? Well, people that have taken the CNA class, right? Well, where are CNA classes found? High schools, colleges, training centers, uh, vocational centers. There's a lot of places that um, offer CNA training, but most of them, most of the students that are going to be testing are all graduating around the same time, right? So what is the main graduation time for most educational institutions? The spring. So anywhere between mid-April all the way out to mid-July, those months from mid-April to mid-July is the busy season for Prometric and for other testing agencies as well. Because you've got all of these high schoolers that are graduating that need to get tested, all of the people in college that graduated that need to get tested, uh, the vocational centers that run on semesters have graduated, they need to get tested. So you have a lot of people in this time frame. The volume increases dramatically and they, they can't just, you know, shove you into a spot. It's not just a paper test. There's a skills test involved as well. Um, so it, it can really kind of delay testing a little bit. Now, we also see this in a smaller, a little bit uh, less congested time frame uh, at the end of the year because some people do graduate in the, um, the winter time frame, so December, January time frame. So you will see a little bit of a spike toward the end of the year, but for the most part, between April and July, it's really, really, really going to be busy. So if you're trying to test anywhere between April and July, you need to give this a little bit longer because there, there's just more people testing and they have to put you into an open slot. There's not as many open slots because there's so many people testing. Um, if you're testing any other time of the year, like now, right, it's not really high volume now. There's still a lot of volume. Don't get me wrong. Uh, Florida tests about 300 CNAs a day and, uh, you know, throughout the all of the testing centers. Um, and they don't really have the ability to test anymore, right? So um, because you have to, they, they can only test so many people per testing center per day. It's, uh, in Florida, it's eight people per testing center per day. Um, some testing centers have double capacity, so 16 people per testing center per day, but they can't just add more in because of, of higher volume. They, they can't do that. So it gets, um, a little bit longer when you have, um, high volume. So kind of keep that in mind. But this time of year, not quite so bad. So if you're testing now, it's not as bad. Now, um... 
you have to remember there's holidays like in the fall there's way more holidays and that's going to throw things off now most testing centers do operate seven days a week by the way seven days a week eight people per testing center um, so you may be testing on a sunday but they don't operate on major holidays and the processing center doesn't operate on major holidays and the board of nursing doesn't operate on major holidays to approve people for testing. So for instance, we just had a major holiday last week, right? Labor Day. So in Labor Day, or I guess it was this week, in Labor Day, um, nobody was working. So that means that instead of that 10 day period. Now we've got to stretch it out a little bit further because we've got that holiday in there. So kind of keep that in mind when you're trying to judge how long you should wait. But if it's been 10 days, no holidays, and it's not the busy period, and you still haven't gotten your testing date, although your, um, your form says approved, that the Board of Nursing has approved you for testing, you still don't have a testing date, then you're going to need to call Prometric. Now, the number is at the top of the form. They do give you the number. They tell you, you know, how to call. Um, but for the most part, the pe when you call Prometric, they're not really going to give you any answers. You're really going to have to um, either be persistent and call back often, or you're going to have to ask for a supervisor who can actually access your application to find out what happened. Um, so be persistent. Now, the other thing that I want to bring up about this, Prometric is not the easiest company in the world to deal with. I'll be very honest with you. Um, from a, a tester's standpoint, they're, they're not um, customer friendly. But if you're persistent, you can usually get an answer from them. Um, but when you call, a lot of times they'll just tell you that it can take up to 90 days to approve you. And if you look at the bottom of the application, that's not what the application says. They're just trying to get you off the phone. That's really their job. When they answer the phone, they're just trying to get you off the phone. And I know that sounds horrible, but it's unfortunately true. Um, all right, so let's see who's here. I hope that helps you guys uh, understand the whole process. Hi, Kathy Ann. Hi, Haiti. Hi, Monique. Hi, Sophie from Kenya. Hi, Tara, Tiffany, Noel, uh, Noel, Noel Towel, Precious, uh, Noel Towel, uh, Amarachi, Sandra, Blue. Hey, Blue. Um, Kathy says, I need, I need more on the written skills, written skills, please. Kathy, and I'm not real sure. Are you asking about more information on the written test or the skills test? If you're talking about the written test, give me one second here. If you go over to um, Amazon and look for this book at CNA Test Coaching, um, I have an ebook that you can download or go onto my website and there's a form you can fill out to download it for free. Um, and that's available for the written test. For the skills, go onto my website for your cna.com and watch all of the skills videos and animated lessons. Those will help you. Uh, Najo says, hello, Handsome Mars. Oh, what a cool name. Hi, Leticia. Hi. Uh, oh, uh, Haiti says, um, tomorrow morning is my exam. So good luck to you. Oh, good vibes out to you. You're going to do great. Hi, Beatrice. Blue says, in my state, you can't start CNA classes unless background check and fingerprints are done and you can't test until it's done. Yeah, uh, Blue, a lot of states are like that. It's part of the admission requirements for the training, but not all states um, require that. So it is a little bit state specific there. Lou says, some employers want new background check and fingerprints before hire, even if they were done four months ago. Yeah, Florida used to be like that, too. It's really interesting. Um, so in Florida, it used to be that you couldn't repurpose a background check. Oh, and let me tell you something else about background checks real quick that um, a lot of people don't really understand. You can't, when you go get a background check, they're not going to give you anything. Like, that. they don't give you a piece of paper, like, 
you know, they, they don't say, okay, here's your background check. Take this and, and give it to whoever's asking for it. They don't give you your background, your criminal background, because everybody has access to Photoshop and they can turn a bad background into a good one, you know, like that. So it's called chain of custody. So once you go in and you give your fingerprints and they take your picture and you sign and you do all the stuff, that all of that gets bundled together and electronically transmitted to the clearinghouse. So you actually aren't going to physically get that in your hands. And uh, because they don't want your involvement in it where you can alter any of the documents. So um, you don't take it anywhere. You just go to the fingerprint place. They take your picture. They take your fingerprints. They send it off to the clearinghouse. Now, it used to be in Florida, especially, that no one else could access that at all. So if you uh, got a background check done for class, you had to have a different one done for testing. And then you had to have a totally different one done to go to work. And then if you changed jobs, you had to have a different one done. Well, about five years ago, Florida um, voted and we said, hey, as long as it's within the same industry, we don't mind it being shared, which is very nice because the background check companies, they loved it, man. They were getting the same people over and over and over and over again, but it also lengthened the amount of time that it took to process this information because it was just, just this volume of the same people. So now a background check in Florida is good for five years. It's in the clearinghouse and it can be accessed by anybody in the medical industry. So it doesn't cross industries, but in medic medicine, it you know, you can access it. So if you get a background check done for uh, testing, that same background check will work for employment as well. And they're good for five years, which is really, really nice. Um, it didn't used to be like that, Blue. Uh, we were a lot like that as well, where, you know, you just had to go get it done over and over and over again. Hi, Fred. Uh, Dora Jonas says, I have an exam on Tuesday. I'm in Texas now, but October... I'm moving to New York. What can I do with my CNA? So, Dora, what you'll want to do is go on to New York's CNA registry. If you go to my website, foryourcna.com, under after certification, I have a list of all of the CNA registries there. So just go onto that page, find New York, click on it. It'll take you over to New York's CNA registry. You want to ask them. I'm a CNA in Texas. I was just recently certified. What is the process to become certified in New York? Now, m there's a lot of states. I won't say most, but there's a lot of states that say, oh, cool. As long as you're certified somewhere else, we'll give you one here too. <laughs> no problem. Just do our background check and pay a little fee and we'll give you a certification here. You can work as a CNA. And that's, that's really nice. That's awesome. But not all states do that. And those that do, those that, are, and it's called reciprocity, that's the term, um, where it just, you're going to get one here based on the fact that you have one there. But a lot of states that offer reciprocity also require a certain amount of work experience in that state. So you have to find out what the, um, legalities are, what the requirements are, because you may have to work a certain amount of hours in Texas as a CNA to be able to transfer or to uh, get a reciprocal uh, CNA certification in New York. I don't know what all of the standards are because they're different state to state. They change all the time based on need. So you need to go directly to New York and find out what uh, their requirements are going to be to get a recipro uh, reciprocity or a reciprocal certification in that state. Blue says, depending on circumstances, nursing, nursing commission medical board may require you to make a mental health assessment or drug and alcohol assessment. Yeah, that's true, Blue. Um, it is true. In Florida right now, they actually added that on to the application, and it's a self-assessment um, that you have to complete during the application process. So uh, some of them are a separate assessment. Uh, some of them are have to be professionally administered. Some are um, 
self assessments. So self identification. So every place is handling this just a little bit differently, but I understand why, because healthcare is a stressful industry. And if you already have problems managing stress, and if you're prone to having to depend on um, unhealthy coping mechanisms like alcohol or drugs, then working in a, a stressful environment is without healthy coping mechanisms really is a recipe for disaster. So I understand why this is in place. Um, but again, some people feel like they're um, unfairly targeted by this um, because they have to uh, declare, you know, self-admit that they're on antidepressants because of maybe a situation in their lifetime or something uh, that they were having trouble dealing with. So it's, um, it's a little... I see both sides of this. You know, healthcare is stressful. We have to make sure that the people that are working in healthcare have some sort of coping mechanisms to deal with the stress that they're going to encounter. But I also understand how people that are actively receiving mental health help could feel targeted by this um this process. So I do see both sides of it. I don't know of any um good way of dealing with this. I, I really don't. And I really kind of thought a lot about this because, you know, those that are actively receiving help, they identify that they had a problem. They went and got help for the problem. And that's what society is telling people to do. Hey, if you need mental health help, go get it. But then they have to declare on a state certification form that they're receiving help. And that could unfairly discriminate against them. So I, I kind of... the. I don't know that it's being handled exactly right right now. I, I don't, I, I really don't know. Um, I haven't heard of anybody that was disqualified though because of the self-assessment. So that's interesting. Um, so let's see here. To protect you, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Blue, everything is about protecting grandma and her house. Absolutely. Tina says, I was too early that I had to stand outside and wait for the door to be open. Good for you, Tina. That's how early you should be for the test. Absolutely. Vlog says, watching from Hawaii. I'm from Philippines. I'm going to go CNA training this coming October. I'm so excited. Oh, how exciting. Um, good luck with your training. Uh, we actually are being used by a school in Hilo, uh, Hawaii. I keep wanting to go over there and give a lecture or something. I just want to go to Hawaii. <laughs> it's supposed to be beautiful. I've never made it. Tina says, Miss Patty, I've tried several times to review your book on Amazon but can't find it. Is there any way you can send me the link? Yeah, actually, guys, if you give me just a second. Let me pull this up. Hold on. I will get you... see here hold on one second I'm sorry I'm just trying to find you on Amazon okay here we go so this is for the US people because other uh, places if you're on Amazon anywhere else it would be a different Amazon but this will be for um, US people in the United States but there is the link to go see the um, the ebook. But if you go onto my website, guys, uh, I mean, you can order it from Amazon, but I think now it's like $2.99 for the ebook. Amazon doesn't let me make it free forever because there's costs associated with it. Um, so unfortunately, I was only able to make it free for five days, and I can't do that again for another 90 days. So if you go onto my website for your CNA.com, here, I'll type that in for you for your CNA.com. Go onto my website, and at the very top, you can. Um, Fill out a form and we'll, we'll uh, email you the um, downloadable version, okay? Uh, Joey says, Miss Patty, I passed a CNA test in Minnesota thanks to your videos. Oh, that's awesome, Joey. Congratulations. I was in the lab all day yesterday. Oh, yesterday was a, a horrible day for me. Um, I was trying to uh, produce a brand new video for you guys on applying TED hose because this is a skill that's tested in a lot of different states not in Florida but in a lot of states 
So I was trying to do a video on it and man, everything went wrong. My lights wouldn't work. My mic wasn't hooked up well. The sound was too low. The um, video quit recording on me. I mean, every problem that you can have taping, I had. The AC quit, so I was sweating. Oh, it was absolutely horrible. Um, but I did get usable footage out of it, and that's what I've been doing all morning is editing that video. So you should see a new video up on our website in the next couple of, uh, give me about two weeks to get it all done. Um, so I was working on a new video, but I'm glad that our videos are helping you guys to get uh, certified and get started in the industry because we desperately, desperately need more CNAs. Um, so I'm glad, Joey, that you found them helpful, and congratulations to you. That is a great, great accomplishment. So Joey Lipley. And um, some who else? Uh, Dora is testing soon. I'm going to write all this down so I can remember. Dora Jonah is testing. And um, Jasmine looks like Jasmine Frenchie is going Wednesday. Wednesday. And hold on, I know I missed somebody up here. Hold on one second. Um, Haiti, I knew there was somebody else. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing it. Is it Fady or Haiti? I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And if I'm not, I do apologize. All right, so let's see here. Uh, Lucy, uh, Shirley, hello. Luciana, hi from Miami. Uh, Kathy Ann, you're welcome. Uh, Jasmine, good luck. Tiffany says, hi, Miss Patty. Is it normal for Med Surge Floor to have multiple violent four-point hard restraint patients and multiple total care patients? The nurse call it the dump floor. Oh, that's so sad, Tiffany, and I'm so sorry to hear that, but unfortunately it's it, it's kind of getting that way everywhere and there's a lot of reasons for it I mean a lot of reasons you know mental health is hard to come by so we have a lot of patients with uncontrolled mental mental health issues that still have physical issues that need to be addressed so um, yeah four-point restraints do happen from time to time um, um, you know it's easy to have good mental health when everything is going perfect, isn't it? Right? If, if everything in your life is good, you don't need coping skills because it's all good. But if everything in your life is not going well, then you need some coping skills. And if you don't happen to have any, it can get bad pretty quick. Well, think about being sick, right? That's a stressor, which means if you have no coping skills, you don't really cope with that stress very well. And we all, a lot of times see people that are physically ill have mental difficulties because they don't have those coping skills in place to, um, to deal with the stresses that illness causes. So I do, uh, yeah, I'm very, is it normal? It, normal really is a very general term. It's not one that I like to use um, because normal is going to depend on the area that you're in, right? The geographic area that you're in. If you have two hospitals in a town and one is servicing high income, um, upper middle class individuals and one is servicing lower socioeconomic individuals, it probably is going to affect the, the type of patients that you get, how sick they are, because people that don't have a lot of money probably can't afford the doctor and may not be able to afford their medications and things like that. So they tend to put off receiving care and not um, be, you know, not treat their uh, conditions um, as aggressively because they don't have the funds to do so. So your geographic area is going to play into this. Um, it also could play into the staffing, right? Um, hospitals that have uh, that cater to the wealthy are going to have much more income coming in than a hospital that's catering toward uh, low income individuals that often can't pay the hospital bill. If the hospital doesn't get paid, they don't have money to pay staff. So that can have an impact on the type of um, care the patients can receive because the staff they do have is spread very thin. 
It also depends on the management style in that facility. I have worked in facilities that were managed beautifully. And I have worked in facilities that were managed horribly. And that does have an impact on the types of, of things that you're talking about. Um, so th there's so many different variables there that I hate to use the term normal. Because it... it your experience of normal on that floor may be completely different than somebody else's experience in a hospital across town on a similar floor, or even in your own hospital on a different shift, right? Because we have to think about um, the needs of each shift. Um, so it, it, there's a lot of variables that play into that term normal. So I don't like to use that, but unfortunately, Tiffany, the experience that you're having does seem to be commonly reported. Um, but I don't want to use that term normal. Uh, Fady says, I have a question after hand wash skills are, are graded. Do I have to keep washing my hands? Do I need to say I have washed my hands or do I need to ask if I to stimulate? Okay, so Fady, you will wash your hands physically with soap and water at the sink for 20 seconds of friction before moving to your nails until you're told not to. So you're going to keep washing your hands. Wash, wash, wash. You're going to wash at the beginning of the first skill. You're going to do your skill. You're going to wash at the end of the first skill. You're going to wash until you're told not to. At some point, one of the evaluators is going to tell you you don't have to simulate hand washing or you don't have to perform hand washing anymore. Just tell me when you would. Simulate means say. So you're going to say when you would wash your hands. So it's just as simple as I would wash my hands now. Okay. Um, Tiffany says off topic. No, Tiffany, it's not an off topic question because anything goes here. We talk about, um, training, testing and workplace because workplace is probably out of all of it, probably the most important one because training and testing takes up this much of your career. I mean, a tiny, tiny, tiny sliver of your career. The rest of your career is all workplace. So um, yeah, it's it's probably very relevant. Um, so let's see here. Uh, Searing, hi from New York. Hi. Hi, Ruth from Uganda. Um, hi, Hilda, Yardley, and Fady, you're welcome. All right, guys. So we are now at the point that we get to congratulate those that have passed the state exam this week. And for those of you who are getting ready to test, when you pass, make sure you come by any one of my videos and leave a fresh comment. Don't put it on a reply as somebody else's comment. Give me a fresh one and just tell me that you passed. And that way we can congratulate you on an upcoming episode of uh, the CNA Live question and answer session as well. So this week, we want to congratulate Joanne Joseph. Congratulations. Bernie Lewis Jean. Great job. Shernette K. Welcome to healthcare. Tyler S. Fantastic job. And Joey Lepley. Congratulations on passing the state exam and becoming certified. We welcome you into healthcare. And those that are testing soon, we have Dora Jonah, Jasmine Frenchie, and Fady all testing soon. So make sure you drop by and let us know how you did so that we can congratulate you as well. I hope you guys enjoyed today's lesson. I really enjoyed um, hanging out with you and spending time with you today. Uh, this was, um, I think this was an important one because it's a question that a lot of people have about um, how to, uh, what the timeline is like for um, getting ready for the state exam and, and what you should expect. So I hope you guys uh, got some value out of that. Stay tuned for the um, Ted Hose video. It'll be out soon. Uh, super excited about doing that. And this is kind of a precursor. It was a dry run really for me to be able to use all of my brand new video equipment and kind of a dress rehearsal type thing to retape the videos coming up. So in the next couple months, you're going to see quite a few new videos. Um, if you can just stop by and give them a quick view as you see them posted and let me know um, what you think about them with the new equipment, I would really, really appreciate it. I need feedback, guys. I'm all alone in this little office. I need somebody to let me know what you're thinking. 
Uh, Queen Stella, hey, uh, how are you? It's been a long time, I know. I'm done with the CNA. I've also done my graduation. I've gotten my certificate. Right now I'm doing my internship in Thumby University Hospital. Oh, congratulations. I'm so proud of you. Great job, Stella. Uh, the Charity says, I'm so nervous and shy. Aw, I'm so sorry to hear that, but you'll be fine. Just keep practicing. And um, put a stuffed animal in the bed and talk to it. You'll get it. You will. I know. <laughs> Let me tell you a secret, guys. When I first started teaching, I was not good with public speaking. I My voice went up four octaves. I sounded like Minnie Mouse. It was hilarious. Um, and then when I started doing um, talking head videos, right? And then I went live. I was scared to death. I am not a very good like public person. Um, I don't like a lot of attention. So this was really, really hard for me. So uh, Cherry, when you say you're shy, I get it. I do. I absolutely get it. So um, keep practicing. It does get better. I'm here to tell you, I live it. It does get better. And I have faith in you. You're going to do great. All right, guys. Until next time, happy caregiving. Bye.